Well, happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of the Arms, Boom, and Leg Project. I'm broadcasting live from the Little Heart Studios in beautiful Amherstburg, Ontario, on a very hot Friday evening. This is episode three of the project. So glad to have you along for the ride. Uh, we've got lots to get to over the next little bit, and my guests are uh, truly incredible people. I'm so excited to welcome them to the show, and we'll get to them in the next couple of minutes. But first, I want to uh, do a little bit of housekeeping on the Arms, Boom & Leg Project. This is a relatively new show. Uh, we've been strictly on Facebook Live over the last couple of episodes, and then we've been putting past episodes up on YouTube and putting them on Spotify. You can, yes, listen to this as a podcast as well. Uh, we have some good news. As of tonight, we are broadcasting live on Twitter and on LinkedIn. So those comments, and we encourage you to comment on anything that we're talking about here on the show from both Twitter and LinkedIn will appear in the feed alongside our Facebook Live audience. So feel free to chime in. And then you may be saying, well, who have you had on the show? How about photographer Steve Biro giving us a story about how he almost got arrested in Las Vegas and how he takes awesome photos in YQG. That is up now on Spotify, the podcast, and you can watch the episode on YouTube. And then our very first debut episode was with musician Luke Michaud. Awesome dude lead singer of Big Wiggle here locally, father of twins, and chomping at the bit to start performing live in a post-pandemic world. That episode is up on Spotify and on YouTube. So make sure to search the Arms Boom and Lag Project and enjoy all the content that we produce for you on a weekly basis. Somebody uh, over the last little bit had said, is the show scripted? Is the show canned? Absolutely not, unless you're listening to the rebroadcast or watching it on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, this is 100% live. We love the comments that come in, and we welcome you to the show. Well, my guests here on the program are just phenomenal people. I've had a chance to know them, uh, well, know their work through my broadcast career. I think most of Windsor Essex knows their struggle, knows the story of their family, and we'll touch on that, uh, and their incredible son, Mason, as well. Um, very honored, happy, and excited to welcome Ian and Chantel from Fight Like Mason Foundation on the project today. Uh, guys, what an absolute pleasure. And uh, joining us from beautiful Lakeshore, Ontario as well. Uh, welcome to the project. Thank Thanks you very us. much. So uh, let's get right to it. Um, it has been a while. You know, the last time I saw you folks in person was pre-pandemic, and we'll get to that in the next little bit. But for our listeners who are watching the show and your uh, followers and, and certainly your supporters on Facebook and social media, Ian, Chantel, um, walk me through... Uh, the saga, the journey that is your family and that led you to fight like Mason and 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 creating the foundation itself. Where to, be, where, where to begin? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I guess our journey starts with our very brave, beautiful boy that you see uh, behind us named Mason. Um, we were young parents, you know, uh, Chantel and I getting married pretty early and having Mason uh, early in our 20s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, early in our 20s too. Um, we gave to our beautiful boy that uh, was everything for us. Um, just before he turned three, I guess a few months prior, uh, after his second birthday, as yeah, so our little guy, he uh, started having some uh, belly issues and having troubles going to the bathroom. And we really couldn't pick what it was, you know, like all little boys, you know, they have troubles going to the bathroom and um, it, issues that just didn't clear up. We, you know, went to multiple doctor visits and they always assured, pardon me, assured us that um, it was kind of very normal for him to have some issues going to the bathroom. And uh, eventually those issues never got better. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it led to the part uh, point where he was able to pee anymore. And then uh, a quick emergency room visit uh, led to them finding a very large tumor uh, in it, growing in Mason's pelvis that was about over 10 centimeters. And uh, from that moment to, you know, fast forward a few weeks, getting rushed to London and- Doing every test possible and yeah. um, biopsies and just everything being done. Um, it's kind of a blur. Yeah. Um, it was about a month until, yeah, about yeah. a month until everything was figured out. And uh, he was diagnosed on May 4th, 2015 with uh, rhabdomyosarcoma. Um, they couldn't pinpoint where it was coming from because obviously a 10 centimeter tumor in a two year old's pelvis um, is quite large. Um, and yeah, on his third birthday, he began chemo, um, a 52 week, 52 week um, 
protocol. Protocol. Um, yeah. To, to try to fight this beast, you know, as it was. And, uh, you know, at that moment, you know, or in general, most people know me as story and know him as this superhero boy, right? He's in mm-hmm. the back shirts and everything with the superheroes. And the superhero journey for Mason began that day. You know, we needed a way that we were going to tell Mason that he had cancer. How do you tell a two-year-old boy he has cancer? And what, what does that mean, right? How do you, how is he going to understand his life is going to be drastically different from, you know, just before till now? And we didn't want to lie to him and we wanted to give him something to latch on to. So being a small superhero fan myself, very small, just, um, just, 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 big, <laughs> just um, a tiny one. Yeah. Just a tiny bit. We were, we kind of came up with this idea that he had this villain, this bad guy inside of him. And he was going to have to get superpowers to become an Avenger to fight off this bad guy. And we use all these metaphors for his treatment in place of superhero metaphors. So his chemo became became his superpowers, Captain America's super soldier serum that made him super strong and exemplified everything that was good inside of him, made him better. Uh, The radiation that he was gonna be able to get was just like the Hulk. It was just gonna blast those bad guys away. There's nothing stronger than that radiation. Um, The port that he had in his chest was uh, an analogy for Iron Man's arc reactor. You know, that's where all your superpowers are going to get delivered right through that just like iron man you're just like iron man and that's why he always wear wore iron man you know pjs and he was such a huge iron man fan so that became everything for for his journey and chantal would ask him you know before uh right before his chemo day you would ask him you know are you ready for your superpowers and he'd go like this and he'd be like i need a recharge need a charge. <laughs> so it, you know it made him not afraid of the hospitals and it gave us a language to be able to um, speak with him in that in a way that he can understand that yeah I gotta fight and <laughs> yeah. you know it's just part of who I am there's and it's it's something to be proud of yeah. just being a superhero that's what it was and that journey took us you know everywhere right it took us from you know Windsor to London to Toronto and all the way down south to our favorite southern city Houston Texas uh, oh. where we spent two months there for his uh, proton therapy for his radiation that he had to get there so um yeah the our journey took us everywhere we met incredible people uh and uh we watched him fight you know in in two countries uh (laughs) back and forth so yeah that's and then his journey ultimately um he relapsed uh in february of the following year on his last chemo day we were supposed to get chemo to finish his treatment we found out the tumor had grown um from half the size back to the original size so all that like, work that we did was just put us right down to day one again. It's like and five steps forward and like 50 steps back, 50 essentially, steps back. eh? Yeah, 100%. Wow. And and how how is parents at that point, like, getting the news from the doctors and the medical professionals that that is the current state of Mason? You're processing this, this information as it comes in. How are you processing that? How are you formulating a response to tell him what what's going on i think the first time you hear it you're like okay we got this we're gonna fight this we're gonna fight this the second time it wasn't like that it was what do we do what do i say how why um what did we do that didn't go right it's you question everything you've done from that point and how much you've fought for everything and it kind of, it really knocks you down to a point where I think we both just were silent. And I think Mason just knew from our faces that he said, I'm not getting better at my mama. Like, um, it, 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 that the second time it really, Mm -hmm. it really gets to you. Yeah. And a lot of parents know, you know, anyone who's been, you know, in any children's hospital, um, with a kid who has chronic illness, you know, when they ask you to go to the quiet room, um, to talk, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. And, uh, and you know, those moments are the ones that you dread, you know, so much that, uh, it just, it's just the worst. So, but we came back, you know, really inspired after to, okay, now what do we do after that, you know, small period? And, uh, we told him that he just needed a little bit extra, right? He needs to make, we need to really make sure he's becoming a full superhero. So, you know, at that moment, our teams, you know, from in both 
both countries uh, came together to try to figure out the best course of action, um, which was to kind of do a very aggressive surgery, which he was deemed um, his tumor to be unresectable. I mean, they can't, they don't want to take it out ever because it's in a very compromising spot. Uh, but they wanted to go for like a Hail Mary last chance. Here we go. Let's do it. And we got pretty much the best surgeon in the world uh, who was actually at Sick Kids. His name is Dr. Lorenzo. And uh, they, him and another surgeon came together and did this very, very aggressive surgery uh, to take out um, three of Mason's organs altogether to take that whole, oh God. Beast, to the whole beast out. And, you know, we had thought that, okay, at this point, we didn't want to do this from day one. You know, it was off the table, completely not even going to think about it. And then to be like our last resort here. And at that moment, after, like you saw that picture from him leaving sick kids, um, we were, to be honest, kind of on cloud nine um, when he's in front, when he was in front of sick kids there, because he got discharged like in a week, in a week. And they had told us to prepare to be <laughs> to there for a, for a month. Uh, minimum. <laughs> <laughs> minimum month. And here we are like literally just over a week later or so. Uh, kicking out the front door. So right there. Yeah. Um, and he was happy as happy as anything. And we were so confident because they were confident that, Hey, we got this thing and it's gone. And, you know, you would go on a little maintenance protocol and just to make sure everything was fine. And that was it. So we went home and had about, uh, three weeks of like cancer free Mason. And we were just, we, we, we did it. We did it. We got it. And we're celebrating. We were yeah. celebrating. He You're had celebrating. Birth, he had his fourth birthday um, and everything was right in the world. There's that picture with him eating an ice cream cone, which was, you know, a week before we got the worst two news, yeah. two days before he got the worst news. And um, he, uh, we were great. We were looking forward to everything. We were to sign him up for T-ball, um, school, everything in the fall. And then, you know, the week later we, got the most devastating news uh that uh actually a few days actually june 3rd june, uh, 2nd. june 2nd sorry june 2nd uh we got the most devastating news that it had spread everywhere and uh there was about 40, 40 men on his liver alone on his liver and uh, the tumor had, the cancer had taken over and we were you know on, on palliative care uh, at that point yeah how do you as a couple as as a young couple because you know, I, I know it was very vocal for you both. I know it was, uh, you know, there was support um, in the community. I know certainly when I, at CTV, when I was there, we covered it and we covered the journey. Um, I, outside of that, and you're going through this and you're being there for Maze, right? How do you as a couple maintain your marriage? How do you maintain that? Is that Does that get put on the back burner when you're in that situation? Or are is it... Um, is it, sec I guess, secondary, right? Yeah, it's something you don't even think about at all. I don't, I don't think yeah. we, you know, we just, we were always on the same page, which was really good. And for Mason, obviously, to be there with him. Um, but I think you're just all in for your child. You know, you're... The focus primarily is on, okay, what are we going to do together? Because we both need each other. You know, I, I know that there's some families and some parents that end up going through this solo and I, I can't imagine uh, what it's like for them because the amount of uh, support you rely on your spouse for your significant other is just is incredible. Right. You know, especially just trading off. Right. You know, if I'm in the room at night and Shan hasn't slept in a, like a day. You know, we've been in the hospital for a week and she needs to rest and I can cover and she can go. And, you know, we're never going to leave our three year old, you know, <laughs> by himself in the hospital. So. Um, just, yeah, it, we knew that we had to kind of come together and we had to do what was best for him. And that was us being as strong as we could, uh, with each other. So, uh, if you're just joining the live stream, we are talking to Ian and Chantel from Fight Like Mason Foundation, good friends of my family. And, uh, certainly I think, uh, champions of the community here in Windsor, Essex. This is the Arms Boom Lag Project, episode three. We are live and we are encouraging you on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter to comment and ask questions uh, of our guests in studio. We've got, uh, actually their studio in Lakeshore, we're in Amherstburg. Uh, we've got lots of time to get to, lots of topics to get to with uh, Ian and Chantel. Nicole on Facebook says, 
Um, when you started Fight Like Mason, did you ever imagine it being as big as it is now? <laughs> Definitely not. Um, <laughs> Our goal was to get a little bit of money into research and start little things, you know, like 5,000, 10,000 here. And then we wanted four IV poles in our pogo clinic here at Windsor. That was our goal. Was our goal. Um, never. We could have closed up shop and then, oh, wait, good. That's no. It. <laughs> no, but that was, you know, in that short amount of time, we were like, is this even possible to do? How are we going to do this? And for it to be blown up with over 300 power poles with, um, you know, you know over $300,000 worth of research already put in in four years. 10 um, active programs. Yeah, 10 active programs and all over Ontario and hoping to branch out into Canada, more into Canada too. Um, it's pretty epic. Like, it's amazing to see what, you know, Mason has done for other kids and other families and his community. So. so so my question to you, my friends, is, you know, you go through this with Mace and, you know, you get to that point where you're thinking, OK, that we need to make the most of the time that we have with him. Right. Was there a point in the process in telling Ian that you were saying as a family, like I can only imagine what you were feeling. You must have been feeling sadness, obviously, anger, hurt. I mean, the, you run the gamut of emotions, not only as, as a father and mother, but as um, as people who, who truly, and I, I firmly believe this, when you become a parent, your child is absolutely priority. It, it, it has to be priority. So you're doing this and, and you're spending time with Mason. Is there a point where you say how I'm going to, how are we going to, how are we going to work through what's going to happen? How are we going to honor him? When did you come up with the the idea for the foundation? Was it was it as he was um, in palliative care? Was it afterwards? Was it when did this all come about? That's a good question because I feel like during the time when he was palliative, um, you know, we were so focused on the here and now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I didn't even want to plan his funeral when you know we were supposed to pre-plan in that, and I just couldn't. I said, oh. I want to wait yeah. till you know. It was done. And I think initially I always had these, obviously I'm a very creative person. And every time I look at something, I wonder how I can make it better. How can I do this? And I looked at that IV pole in our house and I was like, everyone who's coming in is looking at it like it's this like scary, dangerous thing. And it's making Mason scared. And I was like, how can I change this? What can I do to change this? And so I think that's when it began. And like every time I was in the hospital with him, because obviously Ian had to work, you know, I would sit there at night, not sleeping, watching him, making sure everything's okay. And I'd look around to see like, what, how can I make this better for him? Or what can we do to make things funner in the hospital while we're here? So sure. I think I've always known I wanted to do something to help and um, other families in that, but yeah, to set it yeah. in motion was, you know, at the end when we were so filled with, I guess, anger and rage too about like, well, for sure, happening to our son. Why is this happening to any child? You know, and enough is enough. Like, let's, we made a promise to him that we would continue his fight and it, fight for all the other ones. It's a different feel, right? It is a different feel. And, and, Certainly, when and now I wanted to talk a little bit more about our connection as families, like between your family and my family too. But it's a different feeling as a parent when you have those crucial conversations with medical professionals about the prognosis of life or death for your child, and you're having those clinical conversations. Right? It's it's a different feel, and Lord knows that you have conversations with the man, woman, or whatever you believe. At the end of the day, there's the why us, why me? How can this happen? And the comparison that had to be running through your mind too. 100%. Of course, right? Why are we? It, there's so many times, right? Anyone who's in that hospital when some, things are hitting the fan and things don't look great, or there's so many complicated things that can happen to anyone with a chronic illness. And it's why is this happening to us? Like, and the rest of the world is moving on. The rest of the world is doing yeah. their normal life. Yeah. Sure. And you're, you're there. And uh, of course, yeah, it's always going to come down to that. Like, why us? Why, why now? Why, why him? Yeah. And what we found was difficult with a lot of medical professions, no matter where we went, was as young parents, they looked at us as like, 
you know, they, we were, they young. Would, <laughs> we were young. So they would yeah. look more at my parents and say like, we'll make sure they're doing this and that. And it was like, it felt, it made you feel worse as like, okay, it's my fault. Like, you know, and it, so yeah. that was always really hard to go through too. It's we can look at like that and blaming ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you grow up pretty quickly though, eh? Like w when you're in that situation, right? Like I can imagine, I know what Carrie and I, and we nowhere near what Mason went through with our son Liam, but I know talking to other parents who have children who have critical illnesses over the last couple of years, it's like makes you really put things in perspective. And then it really, I joke around, I said, I've got like the whole classic Nick Fury from Marvel <laughs> comic hair going right but it's like you really i don't want to say you grow up but you grow up yeah. and you, you're put in the trenches right there yeah and, yeah. and left there to figure out what you have to do yeah. and, and that's hard and it's so hard for us especially when we were young too right so um if joining the live stream rebroadcast on spotify this is the arms boom and like project this is a platform for the people in our community uh ian and chantelle from fight like mason are my guests today tonight we're very excited to have them as part of uh really a lineup of just incredible individuals in the windsor essex community and really around the world uh asking you to comment in the live stream today um we've got a great one here from adam castle um, saying volunteering at the ronald mcdonald house in windsor one the family staying in the house had a sibling who had his birthday and he was able to pick a toy from the gift cupboard. And he goes on to say, if I asked him if Iron Man was his favorite superhero, the one he picked, he said, no, Mason's dad was. I guess you both had visited his brother in hospital and had such an impactful visit because uh, you became his favorite hero. So love it. I got goosebumps reading that, man. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, what you guys do is like, it's, if you haven't been told, and I'm sure you have, it really has an impact on kids, right? It, it, and, and the parents, as the ch children have that impact, that even for a split second, I believe, alleviates some stress in a parent's life when they're going through a prognosis of any kind. Oh, you know? we, we always said that, you know, when we were going through it with Mason, that we didn't have, you know, there was no fight like Mason for Mason. And, uh, now looking back, you know, this is why we gauge all of our programs on was trying to fill those gaps that we felt and be there when we probably felt like we needed something or someone or um, some sort of support or to know that someone was, you know, there for us that understood what we were going through. And that's what we hope we can be. We always try to talk about, you know, this and the logo and everything being like this beacon of awareness that the families that are going through childhood cancer right now, because they are, and we know we know them that they are, um, that they can see this logo somewhere or see this M and know that, you know, there are people that are trying to help them and help the situation that they're in because we can't control that they're in it, but we can help get them through it. And then you use both of your talents. You're both uh, very creative people, um, you know, and and, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit. <laughs> it's like the Chan. I, I'm just a comic book guy, right? I'm just a comic book guy. But you're like, listen, acting. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're okay we got to get to we'll, we'll save this for later but when you get into the whole superhero thing we got to talk about the whole motif because it's very impressive and uh, as a child like a, a big kid at heart but i know like if if batman were to stop by to say liam he'd lose his mind and it's like quality <laughs> batman right it's like well, we'll get to that in the next couple of minutes but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i really think that it's really cool to see all the outreach and all the things that you're doing for really the wellness around uh, not only the kids, but their families too. Um, and I want to dive into some of those programs, but uh, we got to give a shout out here to somebody. I know that you've probably talked to Joshua before. I know he's in um, uh, a situation as well. He's had situations in his life and his family where he's had some sick kids. And he just says, thanks for sharing our stories of childhood illness and creating awareness of the struggles that we have. It's really such a difficult thing to talk about. And I credit the both of you for everything that you have done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank um, you. Bit of a stigma though, right? I mean, I've, I've found that too, even speaking to some of the, you know, from the heart defect side of things, some folks, especially with guys um, and dads, that there's a bit of a stigma around it. And I think when you're having to have people like yourselves being able to be advocates for childhood cancer research, I think it's so crucial for people to have those conversations. It yeah. is. We get a lot of people that are like, well, I don't want to see that. That doesn't happen. Let's put the blinders on. And, you know, we're never going to help 
these kids with chronic illness, with cancer, with anything, if we constantly put the blinders on and pretend like it doesn't happen. So our biggest thing is, no, let's talk about it. You know, these kids are amazing kids and they should be proud of everything they're doing. And we should show them how proud we are and how much support we have for them and that we're going to be their biggest cheerleaders. So, um, yeah, we try to take those uh, blinders off and just you know, allow everyone to be proud of these kids. And then on the flip side of things too, and, and, and Lori's agreeing with you saying so true. Um, you know, on the flip side of this too, you've got to also, and, and, and you've made mention of this too, advocate, right? You've got to advocate as a parent in the medical system for your child. And, and, and I know that there's been, uh, you know, some things that you've, you've advocated for, for Mason during his journey. Um, you know, has, uh, Carmel says, has the government changed any allowed coverages for childhood cancers? If you know offhand, I don't know if you guys, I know you, you're doing a lot of that advocacy work, but. Yeah. So um, a lot of things did change after um, um, we Mason's it, fight. Yeah. Um, I think now there's actually a benefit for a chronic illness and that for your child to take off. Um, it's, it's extended to extended, longer than, um, than it was as a critical that, illness building yeah. benefit for, for children. Um, and then obviously there was a big announcement that they are allocating um, thirty million. Yeah, the Trudeau government is going to allocate thirty million dollars towards childhood cancer. We're not In sure where, where that's or so, how that's getting broken down, but sure. Uh, hopefully we can get it towards research. Hopefully but you can go towards research, which is we'll work on that. We'll work on that one. <laughs> you'll, you'll push right, and that's that's I, I anytime I, I see. Captain America with Fight Like Mason. I, I'm I'm brought back to nerd out a little bit. It's it's almost like you you're the, the gentle pushing, right? You're you're gentle as Captain America. You're pushing to make sure that things go right, and and you're advocating, right? Yeah, that's it. Just that little bit of oomph that you might need. You need someone to carry the torch, or you know, in this case, carry the shield, uh, to be able to uh, for us, right? So. Ideally, that would be the best. And I have a great face on there if it's if I'm stuck. If yeah, I'm I, I, you know, this is the, the beauty of uh, the beauty of a live stream here, folks, is sometimes it uh, it gets that tense. Awesome. <laughs> That's okay. It happens from time to time. So that is awesome. Um, sometimes it'll freeze up. It depends on it. But you know, as I've got you, you guys can still hear me, okay? Right? Oh yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, you know, when you do that advocacy work and you can do that kind of things uh, to make sure that, you know, you're able to allocate different types of, um, I guess, funding to where it needs to go. Um, why don't we take a look at this? This is something I think is so crucial. And maybe Chantel, if you can still see this, which is so important to see, um, you know, some of the work that you guys have done. And, and this is something that really resonated with folks. And this is a, a fundraiser that you guys did and an awareness uh piece for it, the golden hair dudes. So what was this about? Yeah, so the gold hair dudes care um, is something I came up with last year, obviously going through the times we are going through, um, not being able to do any event. Um, I was looking at Ian and I was like, you know, I really want to, can I like dye your hair blonde? And uh, for those who don't know, I'm a hairstylist. So um, <laughs> I was craving to do hair. So I was looking at Ian and I was like, yeah, I kind of want to, I kind of want to color your hair. And then all of a sudden the wheel started turning and I was like, let's make this a fundraiser. Let's see if people would actually want to do something fun and have our childhood cancer warriors pick um, the color of, uh, of all these dudes hair and that. And uh, yeah, it was an amazing turnout and, um, and it was for our first event, it went really smoothly and everyone loved it. So it's definitely something we will be doing in September again. And it give, it creates a conversation piece too, right? Like where you're able to um, really set things up for people to say, keep you keep fight like Mason top of mind, but also you know, you got these guys walking around with some sweet haircuts and sweet color, <laughs> right? It, it it allows them to find it feel good and say like, yeah, I'm 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 really being unique for something that is truly worthwhile. Yeah, and it was it was awesome because you know for those few weeks following the event, you know there's these guys walking around with orange and bright <laughs> blue and, you know, really kind of crazy air. So a lot of the guys that participated end up reaching out after and say, Hey, you have no idea how many times I got stopped to be like, Hey, what's up with the orange hair? Like, and then they had this dialogue, like, Oh, it was for this fundraiser for fight like Mason. Have you heard of them? So there's this, 
exchange about childhood cancer, you know, our programs and, you know, things like that, that we was able to, you know, showcase what we were doing. And, and they had this really real kind of conversation about it. So. And it's important too, right? Because then you're able to get that funding for Fight Like Mason and really go into um, the different avenues where you can really apply to that that research aspect too. And I wanted to get into that before we started to talk about um, the hair event too. But I mean, we were touching base on that just a few minutes ago, but the research is is, is really what what ties Mason to all this, right? You're, you're defeating, with through the research, you defeat the the, the, the villain for good. Yeah, we always, you know, Chantal has this great quote that she always said, without cancer research today, we wouldn't actually have cancer survivors. So all the whole world is indebted to researchers going through and trying to figure out how to cure this, these, so I should say, in ridiculously hard to treat diseases, you know, and uh, this family of diseases. And we made a pledge to do that and to be able to change the dynamic, you know, less than 4% of uh, the government funding goes annually towards the childhood cancers, all of the childhood cancers. So when you hear that statistic, when you're going through it, you think it's like, that's nothing. And um, when the chemos and the drugs that are being used for kids are so outdated and old, um, you think it's not fair, right? Why does, you know, my son have to have a drug that's, you know, from the 1950s. Sure. <laughs> ridiculous like this is modern medicine right and and learning that you know the pitfalls and the all the roadblocks that everybody all the researchers go through and one of the big things is funding and um and and we hope to be able to change that so to date we've had you know over three grants uh given out for rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma in the last few years um for researchers here in canada as well as in the states and um more Proudly, this last year, just before COVID hit, we were able to partner with uh, the Terry Fox Research Institute and support their program known as Profile. And Profile is this kind of state-of-the-art new pan-Canada uh, initiative that allows for molecular sequencing of children's tumors to try wow. to find an actionable target that's on that disease that's basically personal for that child. So they get shared all across Canada and, you know, reviewed at grand rounds by these amazing research and uh, clinicians. And then if they find something actionable that even isn't standard of care, they'll give it to them as like a, a Hail Mary too. And they've had a lot success. of success in doing this. So this initiative has been going on for a few years now. And we found out that it wasn't being funded in, in London or for all of Southwestern Ontario. And we kind of took it upon ourselves to do that <laughs> so and bring that program to uh um, to all the kids throughout uh, london children's hospital uh that receive uh care so there's an inclusion criteria and whatnot to be to have it done but ultimately the profile group which is again all across canada through the best researchers and clinicians we they hope that this could be a standard of care at some point in this near future proving mm -hmm. that it's a great tool to use and every kid should have a personalized, you know, look at their medicine or, or at, at their treatment, right? And, sure. And uh, we're hopefully laying this foundation now that, you know, a kid gets diagnosed with, you know, a, a hard to treat or a high stage disease. And, you know, within six weeks, they can probably have an actionable target that they know works better than any other drug on that tumor. Instead of doing the standards that they've done for so many years. It's incredible to me that, and I'm sure before Mason had his diagnosis and before he started to become sick, it's like, I think you, and, and forgive me if I'm being ignorant, but you were aware of things like this, but you weren't in like just hearing your passion about the advancements, right? As for you as a couple, but it's like before this was really your life, you know, you were just, it was not on the fringe, but you were just aware of it, right? Like aware of the Ronald McDonald house, aware of aware. some of the challenges. And now you're like, we know what people have gone through. And we know what Mason went through, we, what we went through as a couple, how can we leave that legacy, which is so in incredibly important. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's exactly how it went. So, um, You know, we, we, we are getting those comments in the feed. I'm, I'm posting them as they come in. We appreciate you joining the conversation. Um, Lori, again, love the purple hair, Shan. Uh, <laughs> hashtag epilepsy awareness for my daughter, Alexi. So you, you'd mentioned when we were talking a, a, a bit about the hair event that you are a hairstylist. I, obviously, that has uh, that has changed because of COVID, like so many things in our world. 
Um, let, let's talk a little bit about COVID with Fight Like Mason. How has the global pandemic affected you guys? Um, it has affected quite a bit of how we <laughs> fundraise in that. Um, we have such an amazing community here that, you know, so many were raising money for us and so many were third parties that we were able to do what we could do um, with all the help from our community. And once that was taken away, you know, we have no government funded. We, we're not government funded. Yeah. We're not, you mm -hmm. know, we don't get any of these huge sponsorships and stuff. Um, we're just, we're just us <laughs> and trying to make a difference. So um, when it hit, it was a, big um, eye opener for us that we, you know, we have to start um, finding new ways to fundraise in that and uh, to keep these programs going because, right? yeah, you sure. know, cancer and chronic illness doesn't stop when a pandemic hits, you know, um, it makes things harder and harder on parents. So yeah, it, 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 uh, it was, it was it's a challenge. A challenge. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a challenge. I, I, I say to people, especially you know, at my gig at the Humane Society, it's it's about pivoting, right? And it's about um, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to work best and, and you learn as you go. I think this is uncharted territory for so many people as well. Um, speaking of a parent and being parents, um, you are not only parents to Mason, but you've got uh, a couple of other peanuts that are uh, <laughs> just absolutely adorable. If you're watching the live stream, I want to bring up this little guy because I saw this on Facebook and I thought, my God, what a cutie. Okay, so you got to tell me about this, this Nightmare Before Christmas addict, right? He loves Nightmare Before Christmas. Tell me about this, this lovely little guy. Yeah, so that is our little Miller Mace. Um, he was born a year, almost, well, his due date was the anniversary of me since um, passing, um, but he made his arrival a lot sooner on June 1st. So uh, yeah, that's our little spunky Miller that's obsessed with human anatomy, the solar system, and Nightmare Before Christmas. He says, I, I love the photos from his birthday. Like, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, what, what a doll. And then you've got this young lady who I got to tell you is just absolutely cute as a button. Uh, Buzz Lightyear fan, right? With Piper? Toy Story Obsessed all the way. Obsessed with Toy Story. And also yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas now, now too. So now. now it's all about Sally and now Jack. Now Sally's. But her, yeah. <laughs> so Disney fans then in the house. Of course. Big time. Yes. Why not? <laughs> That's good. That's good. And and they're doing well. I mean, I see I see photos. They seem like they're happy. They're, they're very, um, they're aware of Mason. And, you know, you guys get them involved, right? Yeah, they're 100% involved in everything. And obviously, we have pictures everywhere um, of Mason in our house. And uh, yeah, they, they love him. They have little stuffed animals that people made that yeah. to look like Mason. And they each have that for bedtime. And they just love, they love seeing his picture and anything. They just... Watching videos. And it makes them smile. And, and uh, they ask for it, too. They, they want to they want to see pictures of Mason and they ask Miller's getting to that age where he's really asking about him and, and like things like that. And did Mason like this? I like this. Did Mason like right. this? So, you know, he's the same age now that Mason was when he passed. Um, so it's, that's a challenge for us, but uh, you know, they, they are amazing uh, little creatures. That's for <laughs> sure. And uh bouncy castle was the best purchase I could have made during a pandemic. <laughs> right. Right? Like we, we tried to look for one too and it's like the, the price of the bouncy castles is just insane like and and so i ended up getting a used one and and it's fine and liam loves it and liam's a tiny guy but i mean you i mean miller and piper must just love it right they're just oh, jumping it's like mini okay. disney right oh it's could you could you imagine having that as a child in your house no like no. you see it at the fairs or like at a yeah movie, whatever and it's the best and then yeah. Guess what? You can go downstairs and you got it in the corner. Like it's, I know. it's completed down it right, like literally right there. <laughs> that, 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 you can see it actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, like, right, 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 right here, the blue, right there. It's in the back. God there bless you go. guys. I so. mean, like, but that's true though, right? Because like I said to Carrie, like my wife the other day, I'm like, do you remember when you're a kid? Did you ever have any of this cool stuff? Like, no. You had like a stick and a ball. And you know, now it's like they got slides. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, you know, it's just like not to date us, but, uh, you know, you got to keep them entertained. And, you know, speaking of entertained, I, you know, I, I wanted to, to talk about this on the show, too, because uh, I've 
known you guys, considered you guys friends for a long time, but then I just wanted to show folks um, how much this meant to us. This was the uh, power pole that Ian and Chantel, this is how Chantel and my wife, Carrie, got to know each other is um, we got Liam home from sick kids. And um, not only did they spend the time with Carrie and I to say like, do you know what Liam likes? And we were kind of always Disney fans, but like he's barely three months. So we were kind of forcing it on him a bit. <laughs> Um, but he had the NG tube and I remember Shan, when you dropped off the power pole, Carrie was telling you how I had to climb up on the couch for his feeding tube and hook it on our drapes because you needed the gravity to bring the food through, through his nose. Right. And I remember seeing it when I got home from work that night and I thought, oh, okay. Like I, I was happy we had it, but like, I can't tell you how many nights that thing saved us. Right. And it was just, you know, we were able to put his food on the bag and hang it and everybody was okay. So it was really emotional when we we gave you guys a call to get it. You know, we were happy he didn't need it anymore, but it just me it meant a lot that you guys would go the extra mile to kind of personalize it for a child's experience. And then on top of that, um, I should let people know too that you know when the kid when, when your child uh, graduates from the power pole, they they even come with some gear for the for the kid. I was blown away. Um, and there was some Batman stuff in there for Liam. He still has his little Funko Pop. It's his first one. It's on a shelf. He loves it his little star Wars tum tum that you gave him of Darth Vader. Like it, it was like, it was like, it meant a lot to my family and I, and just little things. So I think, you know, I mean, you must hear it all the time from families, but it's, it's pretty huge with the power pole program. I think what you guys have done. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people, if we're out and about, they're like, Oh, that's a really nice uh, coat hanger. And, <laughs> yeah, right? you know, it's, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> they ask if they can purchase that coat hanger for their house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's again, bringing that awareness that sometimes the Ivy pole is a shadow of that child. If it's, you know, you're hooked up to that sometimes 12 hours to, you know, five hours a day and that the child is bringing it around. So you have to be proud of it and you have to, you know, want to talk about it yeah. and like, yeah, this is cool. Like, look what I have. No one else has this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It is pretty cool. And he, like, we show him pictures. He was a little bit young to remember it, but we show him pictures and he loves it. Like he loves Mickey. Um, and speaking of hospitals here, and we, we, we want people to comment in the live stream. Uh, if you're just joining us, Ian and Chantel from Fight Like Mason are on the show with us. It's the Arms Women Like Project. Uh, we're putting the good before the news. And that's the basis of the show. And Jeff from uh, Snap to Windsor, good guy, comments, watching the feed, saying incredible courage. Thank you for what you've done and continue to do. I'm interested to know how you feel about the new hospital and what you believe is needed for pediatric cancer and in our community in general. That's a great question. Jeff, thanks for watching. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, so definitely right now, if, um, you know, you don't know, um, our, most of our kids do not get treatment here. Um, they either head to London or they head to Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, here we have a POGO unit, which is the um, pediatric outpatient uh, clinic, pediatric uh, oncology group of Ontario <laughs> uh, that organized a satellite clinic to allow for selected treatments to be able to be done here in Windsor. You know, routine blood draws and a yeah. uh, handful of Small certain things, chemos yeah. and things like that, but all chronic care gets done at, at yeah. the So it's centers. one room on the pediatric floor with three beds um, and that's how it looks like right now. And, uh, we and hope an amazing for, nurse. and an <laughs> absolutely amazing, incredible nurse. And, mm -hmm. uh, we hope that, you know, if we do get this new hospital, that we can make us a center, um, to potentially be able to treat some acute care, uh, oncology children, you know, uh, Windsor doesn't really have a pediatric oncologist either. Mm -hmm. And, or, you know, they have pediatric surgeons and pediatric, great pediatric teams, but, um, oncology for pediatrics is all done through uh, London Health Sciences. So um, getting a new center with the opportunity potentially to build that clinic, you know, larger, that satellite clinic larger may not become a full tertiary center, but a very large, uh, you know, improved version of what we have could save people a lot of trips up to 401. Oh God. And traveling, obviously, like, you know, you know, in the middle of winter or any time that you have to get on that highway and go for two hours, you know, it's especially in an emergent situation or any yep. sort of, you just need to get there is, is, a, is, a, is a hassle. So um, I think with that might hopefully would come, you know, this uh, awareness that, you know, there's so, a lot of families, we have usually over 30 families that are on active treatment uh, in Windsor, Essex that go back and forth all the time. So um, 
if we could get, you know, something that, you know, large and with the, you know, new equipment and, you know, uh, a dedicated focus, uh, which would be, would be fantastic. So here's hoping. Jeff. Yeah. Here's hoping. We've been to a lot of POGO units um, across, Ontario, across yeah. Ontario with our polls and that now too. And we've been able to see how those ones work in that. So it would be so nice to be able to bring that here. And we hope we can be in the discussions mm -hmm. when um, it happens too. Yeah. So to put a yeah, little, I, little spin on things. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would, I would, I would expect almost that you would be in those discussions, right? I mean, you've, you've got the experience and you've seen what's worked in other hospitals and I think it, it's invaluable uh, insight as well. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, and I think, I, I mean, I watched the video and I thought to myself, man, like what a great way, because when kids are going through critical illness, like cancer, they're going through their treatment. It's not only physically draining, it's emotionally draining as well. And I think they, they, they need something good in their lives. So I want to talk a little bit about um, this and, and how amazing this whole experience was. Chantel, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this was and, and, and how happy these kids were? Yeah, um, this is one of my favorite days in the entire year. Um, this is our This Is Me photo shoot, which is featuring all our local um, childhood cancer and chronic illness heroes. And it's a day where they get to be whatever they want. They aren't their diagnosis that day. They are what they inspire to be and who they want to be. And we go to, you know, the nines. <laughs> the nines for them and bring them live kangaroos. <laughs> and, That's amazing. Um, so know, good. Spoil them and then present them with this amazing edited photo that they can be proud of and look at every day and say, look That's how far I've come and yeah. look who I am now. And um, it's, it's a beautiful day and I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> I think it's like, and I saw some of the photos too, like just to see these children really like Princess Leia here, like, <laughs> and the Pokemon trainer, it's just like next level, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're doing this, you're, you're, you're providing them a chance to just be kids and, and, and really focus on things that make them happy and what they'd like to be and, and, and just enjoy life. And, uh, rumor has it, you guys were using a pretty good photographer too, right? To make this happen. Yeah. Um, we have an amazing photographer, Aaron Shea, and then we also have our awesome videographer, yeah. uh, Steve. Steve and yeah. It's just, um, we have an incredible team that, you know, helps us make this day. Brings everything to life, yeah. right? You know, from us both looking at scouring. Again, I'm pretty good at costuming yeah. a little bit. So, <laughs> so uh, each of the kids, yeah, each of the kids all custom yeah. outfits for yeah. them. That they get to keep. So we were, you know, awesome. months in advance, we mm -hmm. give them, tell us what you, you know, aspire to be. What do you want the world to see you as and not, you know, a sick kid or not a, not a diagnosis and and then we make it happen right yeah. so um making all the or getting all these pieces to make this these custom outfits for them so they feel the presence we have like a, you know themed music that goes with yeah. their so good. you know shoot you know princess leia walked into you know the imperial march and you know the star wars right. opening credit theme and you know pokemon trade came into you know playing the video game, like with the, you know, um, real sounds from the background yeah. and the real TV show sound. So they get this whole experience of, I'm not Calvin, I'm Pokemon trainer, I'm throwing like, the ball yeah. and, you know, going in and just having a blast of a time. And then they feel great le leaving it. But yeah, Pokemon trainer, he didn't take off the outfit for like three days. He was like, <laughs> got his backpack. He's like waiting at the door, ready to go. He's so, at dinner throwing the Pokeball at mom. Like, you know, like, gotta catch your mom, mom. Yeah. Boom, you know, <laughs> so, sucking them over. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yeah, all of it's, you know, worth it at that moment when you can see those smiles that you saw in the video. And uh, and we're happy to do it, you know, again in uh, in a few in a few weeks actually yes, you know yeah, well, seven, july, seven weeks in july we're july doing, we have another third. group of 10 amazing kids and we hope to make it just as epic yeah <laughs> the passion that you guys show when you talk about stuff like that because ian i know you're a nerd like me and a nerd is a cool thing so, right like we can get into that next time i have you on the show again and it's gonna happen we're gonna dive deeper a little bit into the pop culture stuff right yeah, yeah. But it's like I said to somebody, I said to Steve Burrow last week on the show, our photographer, he said, uh, I said, man, if you were to tell like arms, 1996 Pearl Jam, long haired arms at Holy Names High School that like comics was in 
And like, it was the cool thing. I'd be like, what kind of world do we live in? Right? Like what, like, I want to be a part of that, but I see the passion that you guys like, like with your, your sense of design and creativity, Chantel, and then Ian for, for, for pop culture, it's like, that's got to bring you some peace. Right. When you're doing this, like, I know it's, it's a lot of work doing events, mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of work, especially in COVID. <laughs> but when you get to see these kids and their parents, that's got to yeah. give you guys some peace, right? You know, anytime we see a smile, it's just, you know, those, that year of work was worth it. Yeah. Or that, like, you know, week straight of sleepless nights was worth it. And it, it just makes everything better. And I mean, you know, it's hard to not have Mason here with us, but through each kid smiling, it's kind of like him smiling back too. So um, it's, it is an incredible feeling and to be able to make these kids happy is. And we know the struggle, we know, like you said, we know their, their parents struggle, you know, and we, we brought up the kangaroo for Eve <laughs> Evelyn there. Like you can see the mom just like, holy smokes, didn't expect that. And you can see, her watch her daughter who she's seen struggle so much with her diagnosis and what she was going through and all these you know awful experiences that she's had and she just saw her with like pure bliss and happiness for that moment and then i think as a parent same thing if you can see your kids um truly enjoy like like look at that like she was so happy she just irradiated this sense of joy and um <sighs> And that was everything. And her mom spoke about it, how, how great it was just seeing her do that. And, uh, and we were so happy to be able to do everything for, for these kids in this, in this photo shoot. This is, I'm, I'm a firm believer of this. I think that's the kind of thing that this world needs and is going to continue to need going forward. And, you know, when, when Miller and Piper are our age, um, you know, we, we need people to really care and, and, and take pride in what they do and, and care about other people. Because I just think like, it just, you, you've created a memory, right? And I don't need to tell you guys about the importance of memories. I mean, you must have so many with Mason, right? But you're able to create that memory, that instant magic that these people can carry on regardless of what may come. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's in Yeah, like you said, memories are so important and that's all we have now are memories and pictures and stuff. So, you know, creating new experiences and new things for these kids that they might not be able to do or, you know, have the chance to do. Um it's it means a lot. Um back to some comments here off of Facebook. We are live, by the way, this evening on Facebook, uh Twitter and uh LinkedIn which is something new uh, we're launching today with Ian and Chantel from Fight Like Mason, episode three of the project. Uh, Nicole says, are you guys still working or are you dedicating your time to the Fight Like Mason Foundation? Um, Both. <laughs> <laughs> I and being parents. Yeah. 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 Um, we would love to be able to do it full time, but we still have to feed our kids. <laughs> um, so Ian works a full time job at the hospital and I have gone down to part time as a hairstylist pretty much non-existent during this year and put my most of my energy into uh, fight like Mason. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, Joshua says every happy moment your child has after dealing with serious illness brings tears of joys to mom and dad's eyes. Cheers to that. hundred uh, percent. Um, another great question here from Lori. She says, you know, if we want to get involved, we want to support fight like Mason. How do we, how do we get involved? Yeah, we have um, a volunteer application on our website, which is www.filikemason.org, um, that you can sign up on, and then we'll have your name on a list for any time. Um, the world gets back to normal, yeah. and we need you know a boatload of volunteers for uh, our amazing events and stuff, things like that. Mm -hmm. We're involved in, so uh, absolutely send a, you know fill out a volunteer application. You know if you feel passionate enough to you know do a small fundraiser if you want to help contribute financially, we're you know, indebted to anybody who wants to uh, put uh, money towards you know, helping any of our programs uh, continue and, and, and even advocacy, right? You know, I mean, just being a, being an advocate for learn about the child's cancer, learn about a little bit of the struggles that some of the parents are going through and um, kind of watch our social medias and see well, how we're trying to be involved and trying to help and, and just, you know, understanding that it, one of the hardest things is that you people don't like when you're going through it with, with a child is that you feel like the world doesn't understand your struggle. And yeah. just having that bit, um, empathy for you know what the family's going through in the, in the child um, goes a long way. Got lots of great comments here in our feed on uh, Facebook. Uh, Joe says, we love everything you guys stand for. 
Um, you know, shout out here. Um, plug. <laughs> you know, my wife saying you guys are incredible. I think she's watching upstairs while I do this. It's funny. The last couple episodes, she'll come down. She's like, You're, Liam's sleeping. You need to be a little bit quieter. Um, she goes, I hope you realize and are proud of the huge impact you are making for us so many. And that includes us, the three of us here. Um, the world needs more people like you. Love you guys. So um, I, I just think it just, I, you know, I, 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 you guys often come up in our, our conversations between Carrie and I, like we take the trip up to London for Liam for his cardiology appointments. Um, not as frequent as we used to, but we used to go up, geez, like every couple of months. Now we're got knock on wood. Uh, we're up there. We just got back from one and everything's stable, but like there may be a time where it's like things aren't stable. Right. And then that trip from London, from Windsor to London goes to London to Toronto. And I just think about the emotion that goes into that for us, which I think about you guys. And I, I often bring you guys up when we're driving up the 401 and I just say like, I don't know. And I mean this, I don't know how you guys did it. I, 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 I don't know how you did it. And you're still able to put all of your energy into this. We ask ourselves that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's not easy. You no, know, it's, we didn't not. just, you know, everyone sees pictures and they're smiling and look at them. They're holding a big check and, you know, it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> I cry so much, you know, we go through so many journeys with so many other families still um, behind the scenes and, you know, we feel all those emotions for them, whether they're walking the path that we had to walk or, you know, newly diagnosed or, you know, someone halfway across the world is like, can you help me? What do I do? Um, we go through all those emotions with those families and, you know, we, we want to be there for them, you know, no matter what it is. And, um, yeah, I cry a lot. <laughs> I do, but you know, if we can help one family, then everything is worth it. And yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I want to wrap up the show on, uh, I certainly like, I love that you guys were on. I love that you took the time to spend some time with me today, uh, awesome. tonight. Um, we'll wrap up with a little bit of fun, a little lightheartedness, but I just wanted to say, like, I just think it's so crucial that you guys do what you do and so glad to work with you in various aspects through my career Absolutely. and uh, consider you guys friends as well. I, I just think it's, it's an incredible thing what you guys are doing. The feeling is very mutual. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so nerd alert, um, you got to tell me are, like, who's making these costumes? Like, are you ordering them online or are you like, are like, this is legit. Right. Are we, can right. we, okay. Yeah. I got to hear about this. Right. Okay. So again, the costuming at least started. The reason why our Mason super soldiers uh, started was um, we had a visit uh, by a couple of guys when Mason was going through treatment and there was a Captain America and an Iron Man. Sure. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I was dirty up for, for him. Maybe, maybe he knew what it were, but I was like, this is cool. You know, the costume wasn't the best, but the thought was there. And sure. then I thought about like, man, how cool would it be if the real, you know, Captain America win or the real Spider-Man, the real Batman. Absolutely. Like, oh gosh, that's awesome. So then I've seen, you know, either Chris Evans or, you know, Chris Pratt or some of the actors have gone into, Tom Holland's done it, gone into hospital dressed as a character and experienced, you know, talking to the kids. So I was like, okay, I got to do this. And after the fact, when I decided to do this program, I'm like, I'm doing this. Like, <laughs> this is my dream, <laughs> literally dream come true to be my favorite superheroes and Mason's favorites. And that's what maybe people don't understand. The people that I am and act as besides Wonder Woman um, <laughs> is our Mason's favorite characters too. So like if I'm going to one up you right here. Okay. Like, here's my shield. That's legit. Like that's legitimate. And um, if you told me again, like you said before, if 10 year old Ian was like, Hey, or 14 year old Ian's like, you're going to have a real legit cap shield. I'd be like, you're okay. Yeah, like this is whatever. This come true. Yeah. And being my favorite superheroes and just being able to, again, just like for Mason diagnosis, use these analogies about why these kids are super and, and experiencing them. So I was very resourceful online with, you know, the replica prop forum and a bunch of different forums that people help people cosplay. I kind of, inserted myself into there and found all these amazing connections about people to do it. Now I don't sew them myself per se, but um, I'm very resourceful when it comes to prop makers and contacting guys that 
do a lot of this on the side. You know, I mean, like here's one of my like my Spider-Man masks. Um, Dude, I love it. I love it so much. Like, has like a texture so good. Like Spider-Man does and whatnot. But it's like, you know, your Spider-Man stuff is like, I saw one the other day and like Carrie right now is like, I guarantee you she's like rolling her eyes right now at me. But <laughs> I, I like, I saw one the other day when you guys, when I was, when I was kind of like creeping your, your stuff and I'm like, I'm going to try to get some photos for the show. And then I saw one where it was like the PS4 Spider-Man. Right. Like you had like, that was like, I appreciate that. Carrie's yeah. like, it's just Spider-Man. I go, no, it's not. It's PS4 Spider-Man. He has the advanced why. suit. Spider-Man yes. has multiple suits and the character has to reflect, you know, what's topical. And um, I would be wear that now because he does. That's what Spider-Man yeah. wears. So, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah. So try to stay current, try to stay with people like too. And, uh, and, you know, I just, I want that experience for when I uh, visit the kid to not, to almost question. And they like, do. And they do question. The parents question. Oh, yeah. They wonder if it, is like, that really? sometimes they'd be like, is Tom that, Holland? Like, is that, is that that's Chris not- Evans? And I was like, I wish. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's out now. It's out now. No, it's out. Hey, Chris Evans, good looking guy. That's I it. Know, that's it. it. It is what it is. That's it. Yeah. Cheers to Chris Evans. Yeah. You know, you've got, you've got Windsor Essex's Chris Evans there. I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? That's right. But well, I, I do I have to give, like, I do have to give one break to Ian because when he goes into hospitals as this character, and when I'm next to him, yeah. as the, I'm a character as well, I get lost in how well he, <laughs> how much he is that character. You know, it's, it's not, it's Spider Man. It's not Ian. It's nothing. It's Spider Man, and it's just amazing to see him do that, and with the kids, and um, so I just have to brag about that because <laughs> I get lost in it, and I, and I forget. Oh, you're Wonder Woman. You got to act too, like, because like, I'm just like, then what happened? Then what happened? And you know, just, you got to know everything. The kids are going to quiz you. You got to sound the part. You got to know the part. You have to know everything about because you are them. So why wouldn't you? You know, when I go in, uh, the best, a uh, short, short story, I know we're going to wrap up, but a short story, I, uh, okay. one kid, uh, Dominic, uh, was one of my favorite visits I've done with him. I visited him as Captain America first, and we have a great picture with him, and he loved sure. Captain America and, and whatnot, and he was telling me about his Disney trip, uh, that he was going to take his Make-A-Wish trip to, to Disney World, and uh, we had a great talk, talking about the Captain America, you know, everything was great, I hold the shield and everything. I go back into the hospital again, maybe like probably a month and a half later, you know, the next month and I'm Spider-Man and I see him in the hallway and then he spotted me and I spotted him and I'm like, Hey, Hey, Dominic, Dominic, right? What's going on, man? It's me. It's me, Spider-Man. Like Captain America told me about you, dude. Like I was Disney world. And he's like, (laughs) how like, you legitimately like I kind of was like what like you sound like Tom Holland. He like, can do any voice. Come on, I okay. Say that voice is- <laughs> no, you can, do okay, okay, okay. Sorry, finish the story. Finish the story. I gotta hear. Okay, this. Okay, he, and he, I'm telling him about you know how asking him how Disney World is, and I can see him. How did Captain America talk? He talked to Spider Man. He told him about me, like me, like what? <laughs> how is that possible? So I had this so realization, and the magic was so real that. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. Cause he doesn't know it's me. He doesn't know I'm the same person, but he thinks those two are real and they talked about him. How cool is that? That's so, like, that's like Disney level magic though. Right. Like right. That, that's, that's, that's the stuff real. that the kids are like, boom. And that like moment was so cool that I latched onto that. Like, thanks Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go <ahead>. You <laughs> You sound like Tom Holland, man. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's my, here's my, I'm gonna put you on the spot. You come back on the show, both of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, of course, absolutely. Of course. Okay, so then we, we we'll get an update, a couple months, see how things are going with you guys and fight like Mason. Um, hear about the beautiful, uh, you know, things that you guys are doing for so many families in Windsor Essex, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper and do that because, like, I want to hear the voices. I saw, I saw <laughs> Mr. Pool. I thought Mr. Yeah. Pool was cool. Um, you know, your Batman is all like, I thought it was like decent, but like, I've got like Canadian tire rubber boots for my Batman suit. It's not like, and Carrie's like, oh my God, like, no, no, <laughs> like, no, but yeah, you got to start somewhere. I'm just going to start taking a page out of your book. Yeah, you so, uh, you know, once again, I want, I want to, on behalf of everybody, I just want you guys to keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody, um, tell you you're not doing great work because you are. And uh, keep doing what you're doing for families here who really need it. 
Um, they appreciate it. And uh, judging by the comments we got on our live feeds to, uh, tonight, um, I think that's a resounding yes from everybody else too. So yeah. thank you so much for spending some time with me and, and supporting us um, through the, throughout the years as well. We appreciate it. Absolutely. No, we're yeah. ha happy to have it and happy to, thanks for giving us a platform to talk, to talk about uh, these things too. Right. And it's, it's great to get a, a real dialogue, uh, you know, down about, you know, things that we're doing and how we can help. And uh, thanks for providing that for us. I'm happy to do it. I think you guys um, have gone through what so many people just have no clue what you guys go through. So I'm just happy to, to highlight some of the good that you guys are doing and have a little bit of fun with you guys too. So um, Ian and Chantel, my guests here on today's show, uh, they are coming to us live from Lakeshore this evening. Uh, the rebroadcast will be up momentarily. Uh, that way you can find that on YouTube. Uh, they are doing some incredible work and they are doing some really neat things in Windsor, Essex from uh, their photo shoots to raising awareness and funds for cancer research here locally. It really is just an amazing organization and uh, happy to have them on the show and getting some comments too of people saying, hey, Ian's got to come back on so you guys can nerd it out because we've got to talk Marvel. So that might be like an after dark uh, new show that we do. I don't know yet. So we'll uh, we'll have to figure that out as we go. But I really appreciate their time here on the Arms Boom and Lag Project. So we do this each week live, not scripted. It's live to air and you can catch the rebroadcast again on YouTube. And we also have a podcast for you and you can just search for that. The Arms Boom and Lag Project on Spider uh, uh, Spider-Man. See, I've got Ian on the mind. Spot uh, Spotify. Spotify is where you can find that. Uh, have a great rest of the evening. We are back next Thursday night with just a guest that you're not going to want to miss. The guy is so locally connected here in Windsor, Essex, but he's got a wide reach right across Canada. And he's saying it's time for this to open up again. So he'll be joining me live Thursday night, just after eight o'clock. Have a great rest of the evening. Take care, stay safe. And remember, we rise by lifting others up. Thanks for watching. <music>